talking about the concept of uh, real work and virtual work. And this is a very important concept in um, the structure engineering application to solve indeterminate structure and solving inflection. And we were talking about bars, the application of virtual work to get the axial deformation in uh, uh, bar elements or truss elements. So, <clears throat> virtual work. So the objective from our lecture today is to learn how to use the concept of virtual work in beams. Okay, so we did bars, how to solve trusses. So today we'll learn how to do beams. Just a quick revision for what we did last time. Last time, if we remember, that we need a relationship between the work and the strain energy. So this is work, and this is the strain energy. And if you remember, last time we uh, like drew, like for example, assuming a linear relationship between delta and the forces B. And we said like if we apply this for Q, a virtual work, and then we put B here. So we will have two rectangles like this, and we will end up with like a block right here. This block and the displacement here is delta Q and this one is delta B. So this is for the work. For the strain energy, same thing. There was a linear relationship like this. <clears throat> and then we'll have here the force in the element F to Q and the force in the element F B. And then we end up having like a block here. This part is the W Q, and this one is the U Q. This is the work, and this is the strain energy. And this one is delta L Q, and this one is delta L. This is a strain energy elongation in the members, but this is external displacement and work done on the members, right? I drew these last time, if you remember, and we came up with the conclusion that this area, WQ, is equal to the strain energy Q. And for bars, it was something like this. If you have a bar, so WQ, which is this part, is the area of this rectangle, which is Q multiplied by delta B. Because this is the height and this is the base. Same thing, this part is equal to F to Q, which is this height, by delta L to B. So basically, the Q the work exerted by the virtual force. If you guys remember, we have a Q system, which is the virtual system, and B system, which is the main system. And if you want to know the deformation at a specific element, you apply Q in the direction of the deformation that you want to know. So the work done by Q over the displacement, the original displacement, is equal to the strain energy done by the virtual work force over the actual displacement of the member. Then we came up with this rule, and we got this value using the Bernstein principle or the relationship between the stress and strain and Young's modulus, and we end up having this as F to Q, and this one is F to B L over E A, if you guys remember. And this is just if we have one truss member, but if you have a complete truss that have two or three or five members, we get the summation that comes from all the members, and here we put summation. So this, just in case of bars, you have bar elements or truss elements. 
So what is the case for beams? So the thing is with beams, <coughs> So, what is the difference between beams and bars? What is the main difference? It's the internal forces, which is the bending moment. Bars and trusses only has tension compression, and usually the tension and compression is constant over the length of the member. Like you say, this member have 10 ton tension or 10 ton compression. It doesn't change from the start to join to the end join. But for beams, it has bending moment, it has shear force, and sometimes it has normal force if you have frame, right? It has the three internal forces. But beams are special for bending moments. Why? Okay, let me write this. For beams, both shear and moment contribute. So when we're talking about bars, it only has normal force, so the normal force is the main contribution to the deformation, because it's elongation in the direction of the member. But when it comes to beams, it does, it does bending moment, there's shear force. But usually, the deformation in the beams come from the bending moment. So let me write this. However, the shear force Deformation is typically less than one percent. I believe it's up about one to five percent of the Fletcher deformation. So we are gonna only consider the Fletcher deformation, okay? Why? Because the shear deformation is very, very small. Can you imagine you have a beam that has a specific load and the deformation that comes from the Fletcher, like comes from bending moment, for example, it's one centimeter. But the one that comes from the shear, for example, is 0.5 millimeter. So we neglect the 0.5 millimeter and goes with the one centimeter. Okay, so right now let's just see how we can get the flexural deformation that come that ge get generated in the beams due to bending moment. All right, so I believe I started this last time, so let me do it again. So if I have a beam <clears throat> like this, and have. And this beam have, for example, load like this, like B at this location, right? If I take any cross section at this beam, like at here at this area, so the cross section is something like this, and for example, this is the neutral axis, and if the bending moment is this way, so there is tension in this side and compression in this side, and this is how the strains look like. The I mean like at this area, this is not a cross section, this is like I'm taking an infinitesimal area like this part and this part. So this is like dx and this is a d theta, right? And for example, let's say that you want to calculate the deflection at any point on this beam, like here, at point B uh, or C, let's limit C. If you want to calculate the deflection at point C, so when you put this load on this beam like this, so I imagine that the deformation is gonna be something like this. So here, this is the delta B at point C, all right? I want to find what is the value of delta B. If you guys remember from last time, if we want to use the concept of virtual work, so first, you draw the normal for first, you need to find the internal forces on the main beam, like if you guys remember from last time when we had a truss, we need to calculate the internal forces like the normal tension compression in each member from the original system. Same thing this one, you need to make the original system which is the B system, and you have pinch here, you have a roller here, and you have a load here, 
and then you draw the bending moment diagram because we will we will get the internal forces that come in from the bending moment. So this is how does the bending moment look like, right? <clears throat> then if you want to get the deformation at this point, question: Is it impossible to draw bending? Yeah, it's possible. Okay, so when I draw the bending moment here. As soon as I put the sign, you can put it up or down, but just put the sign, that's fine, okay? So the most important for bending moment is that you draw the sign, okay? So if you want to draw it up or draw it down, that's fine with me, but put the sign if possible. Okay, so if you want to calculate the deflection, at point C, you need to put a virtual load at point C. So if you want to calculate deflection. So deflection, you put a unit load. Q equal to one at point C. If you want another point, you get to another point and put a unit load at this point. Then you draw the bending moment at this, for this Q system, which is the virtual system. It will be something for example like this, all right? This is called the Q system or the virtual system. Alright? But let's say what if you want to find the slope theta at point C. Like if you want to find the slope Here is this is point C and you want to find the slope. So if you want to find not deflection and you want to find slope, you put Q, but the Q is right now is, is a moment. So you put a concentrated moment MQ equal to one. So this is if you want to find theta at point C. And then you find the bending moment due to this <coughs> shape, all right? <coughs> So let me write a few things before I get in deep in this stuff. I want to drive this formula for beams, okay? This formula cannot work for beams because it's based on internal tension compression. So it has FQ and FB. What I want to do, I want to replace F with moment, okay? So how can I do this? It's the same thing. We know that WQ is equal to UQ. The work done by the external force is equal to the strain energy stored inside the member. But right now the WQ is equal to the force the summation of Q multiplied by delta V. Same thing like here. You have a Q load and you have delta V. So if you multiply delta V by one, it's gonna get you the work done WQ. But how about DQ? DQ is kind of a little bit complicated because the, um, the the force the force is not constant in the normal and when we're dealing with trusses the force is constant all over the members but here the bending moment is keep changing if this section is different from this section so it is not constant all over the members so the, right now we need to go and do some integration so can we integrate all the moment over the cross section. So we start with DUQ. DUQ, all right? So let's get DUQ. DUQ is equal to the moment. It's coming like something like here, MQ, multiplied by D theta B. Because this is, this is since it's come like the difference between this and this, this is for bars. So bars has tension compression multiplied by axial elongation. But when we deal with beams, it's only moment multiplied by rotation. Okay, this is the concept of work. All right, so this is UQ. So how can I get the DUQ? So how can I get the, to the total strain energy, not just for this element? So you need to integrate DUQ from zero to L, and you need to integrate this from zero to L, right? But there is something here. I have D theta, but the integration is from zero to L, it's over a length, so I need to convert the theta 
to something dx so that I integrate over the x length of the v. As you guys know from first the principle that we did last time that the curvature of the beam d theta by dx is equal to mv over di, if you guys remember. Okay? So if you want to get d theta, d theta is equal to m b over ei multiplied by dx. I can replace d theta from here with this term. So this equation is going to be like u, q is going to be the integration from zero to d from zero to l, d u q, and this is going to be from zero to l, and you have m q multiplied by m b over e i dx. So u q is equal to the integration from zero to l m q m b over e i dx. Same thing like this one, but this one was summation because you have multiple truss members. But right now we have integration because it's a linear function, it is not a constant function. And rather than having f q multiplied by f b, you have m q multiplied by m b. So same thing over e i because when we're dealing with bending moment, so we don't care about the cross section area, we care about the moment of inertia of the cross section. So it's e. I. So right now we can say that uq is equal to wq, and I have wq here is a summation of q multiplied by delta b equal to uq, which is the integration from 0 to l mq mb over ei dx. All right, so this, if we are looking for vertical displacement, delta b. What if I'm looking for theta b? If I want to know how much is the slope at this location. So this is if I'm looking for displacement. By the way, when we, when we say that we need to calculate deformation, deformation means either displacement or rotation. So both of them, right? Okay, so this is displacement. What if I'm looking for deformation? Uh, sorry, uh, slope. So for slope or rotation, it's going to be the same thing, but rather than having Q, because Q is like a vertical force to know the displacement, but if you want to know rotation, what is the rotation at this, we put MQ. So this is the same thing, but we are going to say MQ multiplied by theta B is equal to the integration from 0L MQ MB over EI dx. So, all right. So we don't need anything from what we have what have been written here, we only need these two rules. If I'm asking you to calculate displacement, so you are going to use this rule. If I'm asking you to calculate slope or rotation, so you are going to use this rule. It is the same thing like what we have used last time, but we replaced F, Q, and FB. Rather than having tension compression, we are going to have bending moments, MQ and MD. And rather than having EA, we are having E. Eyes, and we are doing integration because it is not constant and it's a linear function. <clears throat> All right, so let's see how we can apply this in an example that we solved it before using the concept of double integration. This beam has load W. And length L. 
And with this mod w, this is, there is a deformation something like this. If you guys remember, does any of you remember what is the, is the delta here that we did before? It's five. If you guys remember from last, it was five w l to the power four over three eight six. That'd be five three eight four. Yeah, we proved this using two methods before to get this value. Let's see how we can use the concept of virtual work to find the value of this delta. So <clears throat> the first thing that you want to put in front of your face is this rule. Sum, okay, let me write it in. Let me write the whole problem so you know what we are asking for. Using virtual work, system that means the system with the original load that has W and you get the bending moment due to the system, the V system. And the same thing for the virtual system, but rather you will clear all the loads that this system has. Okay? So if it has W, if it has any kind of load, you remove all the loads. And I'm asking you to calculate the deflection metaspan. So you put one concentrated load in the span, and it's equal to one. So we are gonna put Q equal to one case. Okay. All right. So this is the first step, like systemize, like like make it as a system. I'm asking you to use the virtual work versus think that you put the original system. Second thing is the virtual system without any loads. And if I'm asking you to calculate the deformation minute span, you put one unit load minute span. If, if like half a span or one quarter of the span, so one unit load in this area. Okay, so this is for the first part, minute span uh, deflection. What about the rotation on the left support? I clear all the loads. And since I asked about the left support and I asked about rotation, for rotation, am I going to put concentrated load or moment? Moment. So you ask me, okay, um, what is the direction of the moment? You can use any direction you want. Like for example, you can use the direction of the moment like this, and it's called MQ, and it's equal to one. Each one of these steps, you are getting points. Even if you didn't solve the entire problem correctly, but each one of these steps, you are getting points, right? Then you will draw the bending moments for the main system and the virtual system. So the bending moments for this beam, if you want to do it like this positive or down, but just like put it, it's a positive like this, all right? So this is the bending moment for the main system. Let's get to the virtual system. If you have, what is the value here? WL squared over eight, right? Mm -hmm. For this one, you have a bending moment something like this. What is the value here? It's BL over four. And B value is one, and I have this as L, so one over four, sorry, BL over four, so it's one multiplied by L over four. So it's L over four, right? How is the bending moment for this one look like? So since you have one, so I know that the bending moment here is one, okay? And it's, um, and it's a negative, okay? So, sorry, it's positive. <coughs> 
great because so we usually during the bending moment, like if it's positive, um, you will go down. And if you want to draw all them up, that's fine. And the bending moment here is zero, and there is no, there is not any load here, so it's it's kind of something linear like this, all right? So this is how the bending moment looks like. This is positive, and this is positive. So I try to make all the bending moments are positive. Like, okay, you'll say, what if I put the Q on the opposite direction? Like, but this doesn't make sense. Like, I have the all the load is going down. So if there is a deflection, so the deflection is going down. So I put the Q in the what makes sense for the deflection. So I put Q is going down. But if you put Q up, that's fine. You will get delta, the final delta in negative, which means that it's in the opposite direction of the assumed direction, okay? All right, so I inverse the step. You put the original system with the original load, and then the virtual system with the virtual load. If I'm asking about deflection, so you put unit load. If you, I'm asking about moment, you put unit moment at the location of the theta. So if I asked about the location of the theta from the other side, so you put the moment in the other side. Okay. <clears throat> we draw the bending moment, we are gonna substitute in the rule over there. So we have <clears throat> the rule is the sum of Q multiplied by delta B is equal to usually if you want to write this you can write it as delta B right away. This is what we are looking for. And usually, if you are assuming unit load, so Q is equal to one, one multiplied by delta B. So you can write delta B right away, or you can write this thing. But it always, as soon as you are assuming your virtual load is equal to one, so you can write delta B right away. But some people, okay, I'm gonna assume the unit load 15, or 20, or 60, it will work. But then you will have to put Q is equal 20, or 60, or 50. So the virtual load can be any value of load. But usually, it makes it much more easier for us if we are assuming as a unit load. This is equal to the integration from zero to L, M, Q, the moment from the virtual load, which is this moment, integrated with the moment from the original system. And then I have over EI, DX, which is this one that I just wrote. Okay, so let's find how we can get this integration. So what I'm looking for here is delta at mid span, delta V, that's what I'm looking for. But to get this, I need to integrate MQ and MV. So how can I get MQ and MV? So we need the function MQ and the function for MV so that we can merge them together. So let's get the function for MV. As you guys remember from what we did before, if you have a beam like this, and if you want to get the function of the bending moment for this beam at any section x, what should I do? We cut here and at any section x. And we can draw this out, something like this. And I know that this distance is x. What is the value of the reaction? This load is W, and this beam has a length W. W L over two, and W L over two. And this is W, and I have reaction here, W L over two. So if I want to get the bending moment at this cross section, so I get the moment from this load and this load. So if I want to get W, the moment at section X, which is the moment B. I want to get this moment, MB, at this cross section. So it will be WL over 2 is going to make a positive moment or a negative moment. Do you guys remember the sign? Yeah. If the moment is this way, it's positive. If it's on the other way, it's negative. Okay? So WL over 2 is making positive moment. So WL over 2 multiplied by X. How about W? W is making positive moment or negative moment? W is going down, and I'm looking at this cross section, so it's making moment this way, so it's negative. So it's negative W, X. So W, X is the resultant of this load. Like if you get the value of this load, so it's gonna be W, X, okay? 
w of x is making moment, the arm of the moment is x over 2. Did you guys get that? So the resultant of w is w multiplied by the length x, and it's in minute span, and you have a length l over 2, the x over 2, which is the arm of the moment. Okay? So md is equal to w l over 2 multiplied by x minus w x squared over 2. So I got the function of md. So let's get the function of mq. So this is the moment mq. This is mb. So let's get what is special about mq that is different from this one. It's a linear function, but the, this linear function is changing its shape. Like this line has a function, and this line has a separate equation. Each one has different equation. So I need to do two equations. If the if you are calculating the moment from zero to l over two, it's different from the moment from l over two to l. So let me write it here. I have this the moment is something like this. And um, do you guys know what are the reactions here? section same thing here so let's take the first cross section um, at distance x and this is going to be something for example like this and you have 1 over 2 and this is by this half. What is it? X over 2. It's x over 2. But this only if x is more than or equal 0 or less than or equal L over 2. Once I get here, it's completely different equation. Why? Because you have a concentrated load here. Once you take the moment here, there is no concentrated load in the equation. But if I take the moment here, there is q equal to 1 here. So mq is equal to all right, if I take my section here, it's going to be 1 half, and it's positive, multiplied by x minus the moment that comes from q minus 1, multiplied by, if I know that this distance is x, and if I want to get this r, so it's going to be x minus l, over minus l over 2. So 1 multiplied by x minus l over 2. This is x. And this is L over 2. And I want to get the arm of this force. So it's x minus L over 2 gives you this arm. So let's figure out this part. So you will have x over 2 minus x plus L over 2. So it's going to be L over 2 minus x over 2. All right. So mq is equal to L over 2 minus x over 2 if x is more than L over 2 and less than L. You guys have any question? Is it difficult just getting some equations? All right, so right now I'm only caring about this, this, and this. So let's get back to the integration. I got this equations so that I can solve this integration. So the thing is, I'm integrating from 0 to L. But once you have a broken line, like a function that is not continuous, you need to break the integration. So I'm going to break the integration from 0 to L over 2, 
and from L over 2 to L so that I can accommodate these two equations. So let me calculate the Right now I want to calculate the sum of Q delta P. I'm going to integrate from zero to L over two. And right now the equations that I have is MQ from zero to L over two, which is X over two. Let me get EI outside so that I don't have any problem. And then from zero to L over two, it's going to be MB, MQ, which is X over two multiplied by mb, which is this function, w l over 2 multiplied by x minus w x squared over 2. Yes, all right? Plus 1 over ei integration from, sorry, this is to l over 2. This one is from l over 2 to l, and I have right now the MQ at, at from L over 2 to L is this part. L over 2 minus X over 2. Multiplied by W L over 2 X minus W X squared over 2 DX. Right? Do you guys get that? I divided the integration into two parts because I have two equations of MQ. So I did it this part and this part. I take one EI outside. Why did I take it outside? Because it's constant doesn't affect the integration. The only two variables is MQ and MB. So I put them inside. So right now I need to expand these brackets. And I know that Q is equal to one and I want to get delta B. So I can say here, delta B is gonna be equal to one over EI, the integration from zero to L over two. Let's do this part first. So you'll have W L over four x squared minus w, w x cubed over 4 and all this is dx plus 1 over ei the integration from, sorry, from l over 2 to l so first I'm going to multiply l over 2 by the entire bracket and then x over 2 by the entire bracket so I will have both terms so I'm gonna have W L squared over four X minus, this is two. And then L, so I'm gonna have W L over four. And then I'm gonna have X squared outside. Then I'm gonna multiply negative x over two by this one, so I'm gonna have negative w l over four x squared. And then I have negative by negative is positive. It's gonna be w x cubed over four. W x over four. And all this <coughs> is dx. Okay, I have this square. This is square, so you'll we'll have two of them. Here, so it's two. So once you are done with integrating all these parts, you will find that <clears throat> there will be lots of terms like uh, delta b. All right, let's do the integration. Okay, so can you guys integrate this part? The two over two. Okay, w l over twelve x cubed. The next term. W x power 4 over 16. And this part is integrated from 0 to, sorry, from 0 to L over 2. The next part, this one, and I have one EI outside, so I don't want to forget this. Plus 1 over EI outside. Let's open the bracket. Let's integrate this part. W L squared over 4. But I'm going to integrate X, so it's going to be over 8. X squared, right? And then I'm going to integrate this, so it's going to be x to the power 3, and then I divide by 3, so it's going to be w. And actually, these are two parts, so we can merge these. It's going to be w l over 2 x squared. Do you guys get that? 
two terms, same thing, so one quarter plus one quarter is one half, okay? So when I integrate this part, it's gonna be WL XQ minus WL X over six, and then we have XQ here, and then I'm gonna integrate this one, it's gonna be WX to the power four over six, right? Once you sum, once you, and also the boundary of the integration here from L over two to L. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna substitute with L over two for each one of these X. So this one is gonna be L over two to the power Q, L, L over two to the power four. For this part, you are gonna substitute with two boundaries. The various, the L, and then minus the L over two, okay? Once you're done with this integration, you'll find that that delta B and do all the mass. So I'm gonna upload this, you'll find out all the expansion and everything. You'll find that delta B is equal to five W L to the power four over three H four E I. This is what is the value of delta B, which is the same value that we got it from last time. But you will tell me, okay, that's really, really low. So I want to get deflection. I have to write all this. But the biggest part of that is the integration, right? Is that you find this equation, finding the equation of the moment. And then after writing the equation of the moment, doing the integration, this is very, very long and lots of mass. And I just want to get deflection. I don't want to do mass. So, Basically, we found an approach that we can use just using the shape of the moment. If we integrated this area with this area, if we find a way to come up with this value of integration, this is the most difficult part, the integration of mq, mp, dx, right? This is the most difficult part. If I was able to find a fast way that can calculate this without going through lots of mass and writing equation, and doing lots of integration and maybe messed up because it has a boundary integration and I have to divide them into two, so it's a very, very long. So uh, the textbook that we are using in this course, it gives you like a table A.2, I'm, I'm gonna upload it on uh, Canvas. It, it gives you the value of this integration, MAQ and MV, by identifying the shades of the original moment and the virtual moment. So on the, um, on the, um, the, the, the horizontal line, you have MQ, and on the vertical, you have MV. So you'll have to figure out what is the shape of the original moment. So I go on the vertical one, and the shape of the bending moment is parabolic curve. So I go to the parabola. And what is the shape of the virtual moment? So it's, um, it's a triangle like this. Okay, so I will get this triangle with this parabola and then I will come up with one function and use this function to calculate this moment. So it's something like this. Like for example, let me write what we have here. So it says like, if you have the original moment is something like this and this value of moment is M3 and this is L and the virtual moment is something like this and this is M1, and the, this is A, B, and this is L. If you want to integrate from zero to L, M to Q, M B, D L, so it's gonna be equal to one over three, M1, M3, L plus A, B, over L. This is the equation. How can I get it? Let's apply for our bending moment. So this is this is the triangle that we have, and we know that the value of the moment M1 is equal to L over 4. So M1 is equal to L over 4. So what I'm going to write is 1 over 3 multiplied by L over 4. So I got the value of M1, this part. The second part, m3, m3 is equal to wl squared over eight, which is this part. So I was gonna write wl squared over eight. Then l, the length, plus 
A, A is the distance here. I know that the moment here is in the middle, right? So this is L over two and this is L over two. So it's gonna be L over two multiplied by L over two over L. And then once you get in all of this, it's gonna be same thing like five W L over four, three, eight, over three, eight, four. But this is just a moment, it doesn't include the ER. So if you want to calculate the delta D, so it's gonna be one over EI, the integration from zero to L, M and Q, and D, DL, the DX, and this is gonna be five W L four, three, four EI. So this is much assembled, right? So all what you want to do, identify the shape of the moment, and identify the shape uh, of the virtual moment and get in this and it's gonna give you a rule how to use these values to calculate the minimum without doing any math. Okay, so what if, for example, you end up with putting like, uh, what if when we you When you were putting the uh, virtual load, you put Q like this, Q equal to one. You can put Q any direction. And you end up with bending moment like this, and it's a negative, okay? But the bending moment on this lab is going down and it's positive. All the values here is based on positive things, uh, like positive directions. So all of them are going up or going down. But if you have one is positive and one is negative, you will do the same rule, but rather than having a positive value, you are gonna put a negative value, okay? So if they are, because you will have here, the moment is negative L over four, but you will have the moment here is positive W L squared over eight. So one of them is positive and one of them is negative. So that's, that makes sense. So the entire moment is gonna be negative. So that means that if this value is negative, so your SU direction of the deflection going up is not true, it's in the opposite direction. So if you did it this way, you will have to make it clear here and write a text that say um, that the, the, the deflection is in the opposite direction. Okay, so you will have to say it's in the opposite direction from the SU direction. Okay, so I'm done with the deflection. So let's, see, let's do the, um, the rotation. If I wanted to calculate the rotation, right now I'm going to escape this moment, and I'm going to use this moment, and I'm going to use these graphs. So for these graphs, I have Q, MQ is like this triangle. So I go to this triangle and then hit with the parabolic curve. It's going to give me a different equation. Right, so right now we are going to integrate. This with, and this is one, and both of them are positive moments. I need to integrate, this is MV, and this is MQ. If you look here, you will find that the equation of a parabolic curve with a triangle is the integration from zero to L, MQ, MV, DX, for these two together, it's one over three, M1, M2, and M1 is this one, they call it M1, and this one is called M2. You integrate M1 with M3. Okay, so right now M1, the value is this one, is M1, and this value is M3. So this is gonna be equal to, yeah, multiplied by L. Don't forget this one, and then this one. Yeah, you have L here, so it's usually C, multiplied by M1, multiplied by M3, multiplied by a lens factor. Okay, so usually there is something here, one over two, one over three, one over four, one over five, whatever. So the general rule is, for example, the integration from zero to L, M1, MB, MQ, DL, is something like this, C, M1, M2, and then function in L. So my C here is one over three, and I have M1, M3, and right now I have L right away. Here I have function in L. So if I want to do this, it's gonna be one over three, multiplied by M1, which is one ton meter, 
multiplied by m is 3, which is this value, w, l is square over d, multiplied by l. So this is going to be w, l, q over 24. So this is this part. So if you want to get the theta, we know it's the summation of m and q multiplied by theta is equal to 1 over di, the integration from 0 to l, m and q, and d over ei dx. Sorry, I have the i out. It's this part. m and q is equal to 1 because this is the unit load that we put it here. m and q is equal to 1. Multiply it by theta, so I have 1 by theta is equal 1 over ei multiplied by wlq over 24. So this is going to be wlq over 24ei. So this is the value of theta b. Does anyone of you have any question? Yeah, I do have a question. Why do you have a like, nan symmetric bend the moment diagram? You will have to divide it. So if you have multiple ones, so we'll have to divide it into small triangles. And then do each triangle with each part. But usually when I get in the exam, I'm going to give you a simple uh, parts to do integration. Okay, so this so far, uh, how to do it? Let me do another example on a cantilever beam. But we are not going to use this method. Don't use this in the exam. If you did it, you will mess it up. Because when I put time for this questions, I'm not going to put time that you are going to do all this, getting all the equations and doing all the integration. I'm going to put time for one single line to write that this moment is equal to this, and you go in this graph and get these values. And this takes like two to five minutes. But this part is going to take half an hour to do it. And don't do it in the exam. I just do it as an illustration how to do it mathematically. But we are not mathematicians, we are engineers. We need to get the results. So the results, I'm getting you a table. Use this table, substitute in the equation, and get uh, the problem solved. Okay, so we are gonna do the same problem, but for a cantilever. Using the virtual work, compute the deflection at the tip, the deflection and rotation at the tip. Because we only have deflection and rotation here. Here there's no deflection and rotation. So let me write the steps that you should do in the exam so that you don't forget. First thing for these problems is number one. Let's do them one by one. This is the cantilever. We will draw the bending moment 
for the original system, this system. So I have my cantilever like this. <clears throat> and the bending moment for the cantilever is negative. You can write the negative down, you can write it up, but the most important thing is that you know what is the sign of the bending moment. You know what is the bending moment here? If I have W, what is the bending moment here? So it's WL is the resultant. It's in the middle, multiplied by L over two, so it's gonna be WL squared over two. This is the bending moment. So it's a parabolic curve, but it's going down from this line, and this one, this part is WL squared over eight, like from this line to down there. So it's not linear, it's parabolic curve. All right, for drawing the bending moment for the virtual system, you need to use the main system without any loads, like this clear all the loads, and I'm asking for the deflection at the tip. So if I'm asking for the deflection at the tip, we put unit load at the tip Q equal to one, and I put it this way, why? Because I know the deflection is going down, so I put it down. If you put it up, no problem, it will get the deflection negative, so it will say it's in the opposite direction. So if, then get the bending moment for the virtual system. So the bending moment is gonna be linear, something like this. <clears throat> What is the value of the moment here, knowing that this distance is L? So it's one multiplied by L, so it's gonna be L, right? If I asked you to calculate deflection, so here's the system. <clears throat> what should I put here? For, uh, sorry, for rotation. Moment, right? So I'm gonna put, for example, a moment like this, all right? So let me make it negative at one point. Let me put the moment this direction. Put it in any direction you want. So the moment in this direction is gonna be negative because I told you the positive is this way, like this is the positive. So the moment from the right side is this way and from the left side is this way. So I made it in the other direction. So if you draw the bending moment diagram comes from here, it's gonna be something constant like this. If you take out this cross section, so it's gonna be MQ here is equal to one. One, 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 until you come here, it's a still one. So the value of the moment is equal to one. So I did the various two steps. Draw the bending moment diagram for the original system and draw the bending moment diagram for the virtual system. You got almost 25% of the points for this problem. Once you draw all these. So the next thing is, is to use the rule that Q, multiplied by delta D is equal to the integration from zero to L, M A Q, M D over E I D X. So let's find the this integration. If you want to get the integration from zero to L, M A Q, M D D X, I told you, don't do integration, don't do math. Integrate these two together. I go back to this table, okay. So Q is a triangle, so I go down until I hit a triangle. I will find two triangles. One of them is the uh, is this way, and one of them in the other way. Like you'll find, can you guys see? Okay, all right, so what is the difference? <clears throat> oh, sorry, MAQ is in the other side. I have only one triangle, this side. But I will tell you what is the other two triangles is do. So, Sometimes you have moments like this, and you have another one like this, okay? Like, let's assume this is MQ, and this is MB. So, you need to integrate this triangle with this triangle, but sometimes you find triangles, both of them are on the same side. So you need to integrate this one with this one. So you need to make sure that these are matching, like if this was this, so I'm gonna get for example, here, this triangle with this triangle. Both of them are at the same side, all right? So when you go here, you'll find this triangle with this parabolic curve. The function is one over four, M1, M3, L, okay? So M1 is the MAQ, which is this one. This is M1, L, and this is M3, so one over four, M1 is L, MAQ is W, L is square over two, multiplied by, this 
to spell squared down. So once you are done with this, so this is going to be W L to the power four over eight. So this is just the integration of this part. So if you want to get down to delta V, so one multiplied by delta V is going to be equal to W L to the power four eight over dr. This is the value of delta V. Let's get to the value of the rotation at the tap here. I will do the same thing. MQ multiplied by theta will be equal to the integration from 0 to L. MQ, MP, dx over dr. Same thing, but rather than having Q, I'm having moment MQ. And rather than having deflection, I'm having rotation theta. So right now I can write, getting this integration from 0 to L, MQ, MV, dx. Let's get this integration. This integration, so I'm going to integrate this with this part, these two moments. So let's find where are these two shapes. I will go down, I will have this as MV, this is the parabolic, and I will look for the rectangle. The, rect the rectangle is this one. So the very equation here. I have a rectangle as an MQ, and I have a parabolic curve for MV. So I have 1 over 3, M1, M3L. So 1 over 3, M1 is MQ, this one, which is equal to 1. M3 is M3. W L squared over two multiplied by L. So this is gonna be W L Q over six. So getting back to this equation, so theta V is equal to W L Q over six ER. Right? Okay, so right now we solved the entire problem rather than on three boards, we did it only on one board. It's a still long, but it's still one board, not three boards. But just think about, because there's, in the next midterm, there's a, definitely a problem on this part. Okay, so don't think about it. it's very complicated. Think about these four steps. You're getting a problem, whatever the problem is, you draw the building moment for the problem that I'm getting to you. Then clear all the loads. So for example, if this one has, if I put W with B here, with moment here, with whatever load here, clear all these loads and book one unit load at the asked location. Like for example, I might not ask you about the displacement here, I'm gonna ask you about the displacement at metaspan. Like this one is gonna make displacement like this, I'm asking for this though. So you are gonna put the unit load where? At metaspan. I'm asking about the rotation mid span, so I'm gonna put the unit load at mid span. Okay? So you put the load at mid span and then get the bending moment, draw the bending moment for the virtual system. Okay? You draw both bending moments, so then you switch to this figure. Look at the shape of the bending moment for the original system and locate it here. If it's rectangle, you put the rectangle. If it's triangle, you know how is the triangle facing. And if sometimes it's a trapezoid, so you use the trapezoid, but in our case, it's this parabola. Okay, so I located this parabola. Then, then identify the shape of the bending moment for the, uh, the virtual system. And you go here, it's triangle like this, okay? Once you do this, identify the shapes, you get the equation. So you do get either one of these equations, it's usually a number or a, a ratio multiplied by M1, M3, and L. So you put all three, and then you'll find what is the value of M1 and what is the value of M3. This is are the values. Multiply them together, you get number. So you only get the solution for the moment integration. Then don't forget, don't forget dividing by di so that you get the entire theta. Okay. Does any of you have any question about that? All right. So right now we are done with the virtual work. Next time we are gonna do a different method to calculate the formation. It's called the method of uh, consistent redundance. And it's also a very important method. 
there is definitely a question in the midterm about this one, and for next week we are going to learn a new method, and there will be a question in the midterm on the new uh, method. So that's all for today, and see you guys next time. If you have any problems with the project, just like communicate with me, and I did some Zoom meeting with some groups. I didn't like sometimes they have some problems, some concerns, checking the models. If you want me to go through your model and know that everything is right, uh, do quick check on a few things. That's fine with me. Just Send me a message on Canvas and we can find time to meet, right? Okay, sounds great, and see you guys next time.